Hello, everybody, and welcome again to ChessLecture.com. This is International Master David Vigrio, and today I'm going to look at a game from the uh, Melody Amber um, Blindfold Rapid Tournament that was played between Levon Aronian and Magnus Carlsen. And this game caught my attention for a couple of reasons. One, because Carlsen, um, he lost his first two games uh, to even check in this tournament. The, for the format of the tournament is they play... It's around Robin, but they play two games against each other, and they play one blindfold game, which is also a rapid, and then they play one conventional rapid game. So in the very first game, Carlson decided to play A3 on move one against Evenchuk, and he lost, and then he also lost with black. But since then, um, so far at the time of this recording, he's won six in a row. So now he has six out of eight after an 0-2 start, and he's actually tied for first with Evenchuk, so this game um, was played in the very next match against Aronian, um, who he managed to beat 2-0, as he has everybody else uh, since then. And the game also caught my attention because it's a sharp King's Indian, um, and it's a line that's kind of related to a line that uh, Jesse discussed in his uh, Death Star lecture. Slight, slightly different position, but same ideas. And I think this game kind of shows the flip side of white strategy. So let's take a look at the game. It went knight f3, knight f6. We quickly transpose into a classical King's Indian. c4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7, e4, d6, d4, castles, bishop e2, e5, castles, knight c6, d5, knight e7. Now, keep in mind, this game was played with both players uh, blindfolded. The, the way they actually do it is they sit, a, they each have like a laptop, their own laptop, and uh, with a blank computer screen. Uh, it, well, it has a, a chess board, and it just shows the moves. So, you know, it'd be like looking at a, a game on chess base or on ICC, where you can see the moves on the right, but uh, no pieces, you know, just the board. So they have to play that way. And they still produce um, some nice games. So th there's always some games with some, some blunders, you know, some hanging queen or something. I remember Anand hung his queen a couple of years ago. Um, but there's still always some, some neat games. So here, Aronian played 91, which uh, he's played before. Uh, a, a lot of what we've looked at on this site is on the very popular uh, bayonet attack. But Aronian um, has played 91 lately. He played it against uh, Nakamura for one. So knight d7, the main move, the best move. And Aronian played knight d3. This is kind of the, the old move. Um, the sharpest line is bishop to e3, which I've covered a couple times uh with some of my own games, like six-point uh, bishop. And this is a different strategy because uh, white allows some, you know, black to gain some tempi, pushing his king side, and then kind of aims for the queen side. So the, the difference is that the bishop is much more active than it would be on, like, d2. Now, what Jesse looked at was the strategy with f3, F5, G4. And uh, this line, it was it was popular a long time ago with some Hungarian players, and then it kind of went under a cloud after a famous game uh, between Pinter and Nunn, uh, I think at the Thessaloniki Olympiad, um, maybe 86 or 88, 1988. Um, the, the issue with this kind of strategy for, for white is that you know, white is gaining space on the king side. He already has space advantage on the queen side, but there's always the danger that he becomes overextended and loses control of the space, in which case, um, you know, his king is weak. And, you know, when, when you have a lot of space, if you overextend, suddenly you kind of have like a soft underbelly because all your pawns have been advanced. And it's kind of what happens in this game, but in a, in a slightly different line. So you see we get the same kind of structure. So Aronian played knight d3. It's kind of the old line. f5, bishop to d2. 
So White's idea is to play like rook c1 and c5. And now f4 is no good immediately because of bishop g4. And it will be very hard for black to avoid training this important c8 bishop. Because even after like h5, you know, bishop e6 check, like he'll never be able to to get rid of this bishop without trading it for this. So, so because of this, black usually plays uh, knight f6 first, and then after f3, then f4. And this actually happened in um, a game between Aronian and Nakamura earlier this year. And this is kind of like an old main line. So that after c5, g5, cd, cd. Usually white plays rook c1 here, but Aronian played knight f2 right away. And here, you know, the battle lines are kind of clearly drawn. Like white's going to try to play like rook c1, and queen c2, and maybe knight b5. White's going to play on the queen side, whereas black is going to try to eventually push on the king side. But it's not so easy, because white will play h3, and white has like a lot of pieces controlling the g4 square. So it's not easy to get in g4. So um, this, this game between Nakamura and Aronian, with Aronian eventually won with white after a long maneuvering game, but it's kind of a, a different story. Now, what, what Carlson did here was he played a king h8, so it's kind of a little bit of a waiting move. Um, and this also has some possibilities, like playing knight on e7 to g8, and maybe even bishop to h6 to try to trade off this bishop. But I don't really like the move order that he used, um, even though it ended up working out well for him here. I think if black wants to play this way, he should actually play king h8 right away. And the reason for this is the knight on d7 still helps hold up c5, <clears throat> and then this knight can even go to f6 like this. That's one possibility. Um, so it's just like kind of one move difference because this knight's still here and white hasn't done f3 yet, but um, I think if black wants to play that way, that's a little bit more accurate way to do it. But um, Carlson, he has his own opinion, to which he's entitled. <laughs> um, and he played knight f6, f3, now king h8. And here Ronnie played a sh kind of a strange move. I think that, um, you know, well, strange for, for this theoretical position. Um, the most common is to play like c5 right away, or even b4, although this move's not strictly necessary. Um, and by playing c5, it kind of shows, you know, um, the downside to black playing knight f6, whereas if he had done it right away, play king h8 right away, then white, if he wants to play c5, he has to spend a move preparing it with b4. You know, and now maybe knight f6, f3, and black can kind of play normally. But here, here white was forced to spend a tempo. Um, in the game, Aronian adopted a different strategy. I think that rook c1 or c5 right away is probably um, more consistent. But he played g4. And, I mean, this move, it, uh, you know, this kind of follows, you know, Jesse's um, ideas in Jesse's lecture. There, there is some logic to it because, again, this knight has gone to f6 rather early, whereas in the normal line, for example, with f3, f5, g4, usually black plays king h8, again, with the idea of playing the e7 knight to f6, like knight e7 to f6. So the knights aren't quite tripping over each other. Black will sometimes also play a5 and knight c5 and maybe b6 to kind of blockade the queen side a bit. So g4 is it, it does have its own logic, and again, I think this shows why knight f6 isn't the most accurate. But um, Carlson has a different plan here available now. That's another way to meet this g4. He plays c6 and this plan will end up showing the dangers for white in this kind of structure. Even though he has a nice pawn chain and 
you know, his king doesn't look to be in too much danger because he has enough space over there. Um, if anything goes wrong, White's king doesn't really have a good place to be, you know. The danger for Black is that he runs out of space, but obviously Black's king is quite safe. Another point is that in these G4 lines, when White does F3 and G4 right away, usually this knight is still on E1, and sometimes the knight can even come to G2, 